Hello everybody, this is Starman, and welcome back to Let's Play Under a Killing Moon. Well, we're getting ready to head back to Texas office, but uh, one quick little note. Uh, I realized that I did, in fact, lose 20 points last time from destroying the uh, artifacts in Eddie Ching's vault. But I'm not going to go back and restore to fix that, because uh, the points really don't matter in this game, and... Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm playing this, it, we're going golf rules, so I'm going to play this as it lies. So, we'll go ahead and check in back at the office, call the Countess Rittenhouse, or whatever her name is, and uh, get ready to reap the reward for retrieving this statue. Oh, I am one tired hombre. I can't wait to... Oh, shoot. I go through all that work to get the statuette out of Ching's place, and I leave it in the damn speeder. And I didn't even roll up the windows. I am such an idiot! What the heck? Head feels like it's been pounded with a lead pipe. It was. I guess it wasn't a bad dream after all. I wonder how I got here to my office. All I remember is flying pipe and stars. Damn it! After all the trouble I went to to get that stupid statuette, someone just walks up and takes it like candy from a baby. And my wallet's gone too. I hope somebody on the street saw me get jumped. I've got 29,000 reasons to get that crystal bird back. Hopefully I haven't used my tube of miracle facial cream. It should help reduce the swelling and make me look almost human again. Alright, well... No faxes waiting for us. No mail. Nothing else to do but hit the street. I said the street, not my office. What's going on, Tex? Oh, no cute banter this time. We're just going to cut right to the questions. <laughs> Sorry, Tex. I, I didn't see a thing. You know, I'll let you know if I hear anything. All right. You know, I guess based on the title of uh, day three being, you know, Colonel, Fran, and Allie, we probably need to go talk to Fran. Metagaming a little bit. Oh, and uh, in case you're wondering what the pun is, the, uh, <clears throat> the day three title, it's a reference to an old puppet show Kukla, Fran, and Ollie. And shockingly, I know that from watching Mystery Science Theater 3000. Oh, Tex, why can't all the men be like you? Mock humility, cocky chauvinism, reveal the true PI persona. Let's go with true PI. You really don't want all men to be cynical alcoholics with large, painful bumps on their heads, do you? Oh, you poor dear. They hit you pretty hard, didn't they? Tenderhearted martyr, interrogate forcefully, vengeful ranting. You know, she's been nice to us for the most part. Let's stick with tenderhearted. Oh, it's not too bad. My head's almost stopped bleeding. I just wish I could find out who hit me. Oh, you poor darling. Listen. I think I might be able to help you, but I need a favor from you first. 
I saw you get jumped last night. Sal told me to keep quiet and that telling you would put my life in danger. But I'm willing to talk if you'll give me some proof that Sal is having an affair. Then I could divorce him and get some of the money he's been hiding away all these years. Let's, uh, sounds like a fair deal to me. You drive a hard bargain, Francesca. But I need a lead on my case, so I'll see what I can dig up on Sal. I don't know anything about the girl that Sal is seeing. I've gone through his things, but haven't been able to find anything except for this note. I think it's meant to be a coded message. <laughs> I'm sorry I don't have anything more for you to work with. Let me know when you've got something. All right, well, that is, in fact, a coded message of some type. Z equals A, J equals B, S equals C, G equals D. That, of course, does not do us much good without something else to go after. <sighs> well, might as well check with the rest of the neighborhood. See what they might know. Too bad you don't like fresh brains, mate. Out off the grill. I thought you were a mutant, not a zombie, Louie. Yeah, well, I guess there's not really much of a difference. Franny told me you got whacked. I haven't heard any word on the street about who would have done it. And I'll be enough Lowell Percival is on our list of contacts. He's some billionaire. I think he runs some kind of operation on Mars or the moon. <clears throat> yeah, actually, for those of you who uh, sat through my Martian Memorandum Let's Play... You'll remember Lowell Percival was the second richest man in the world, and probably the richest man in the world now. Sorry, Mife. I've heard his name, but I don't know anything about him. As a matter of fact, he just left. You'd probably be interested to know that he tore up a note and left it in the trash. Louis tells me he just took the garbage and dumped it in the trash can just outside the brewing stew. Hmm. Torn up note, eh? These must be the note scraps Louis told me about. And yep, here comes another one of these fun. Uh, matching puzzles and it's pretty basic just uh, move the mouse pieces or, or move the pieces around with the mouse rotate them using the left and right arrow key now I won't make you sit through me putting this whole thing together so we'll do a quick jump cut here and I will come back once I have the message assembled you're welcome yeah, this is a fairly simple puzzle. You just have to treat it like any other jigsaw, just try and get the edges first, and then figure out what fits from there. That completes it. Now that it's assembled, I think I'll glue the pieces together so they won't move. All right, so now we have that. We can combine it with the note, with the code on it. And let's go ahead and examine the encoded note. <clears throat> and we've got another bit of a puzzle here. This one, uh, basic cryptography, you have to try and take a guess as to what uh, letters are missing and try and figure something out. Uh, the ones in red we know from the code. And again, I'm not going to make you uh, watch me guess through this. But once we guess it, uh, it'll highlight the letters and change it so we can't change it back. So you can, in theory, just go through A, B, C, D until you find the right one, but uh, I'm gonna do this with a little bit more finesse than that, but it's still gonna be pretty boring to watch, so I'll go ahead and cut this until, once again, I'm one clue away from getting it finished. See you in a bit. Okay, well, I think I've got enough of it to fix it from here. Uh, again, it's pretty basic. You just have to kind of guess at it, and. Uh, the first word, you only have so many words that begin with a consonant and end with E, so from course, just remember going from B to we, and then that one, I'm changing some letters here, and then 
have confirmed your appointment with chastity. chastity. I call her irony. Whoop. And something I cannot type. With chastity at the suite in the Golden Gate Hotel at the usual time, the password today is silicon. So, yeah. Now we just need to go to the hotel down the street and see what we might be able to find. This guy comes up to me and says he don't like you hanging around here. So he gives me a bunch of money and says he'll pay me more if I keep you out of here until he goes away. Ardo's not gonna let me into those rooms at the hotel, but I've got that Inspector Burns costume. Maybe I'll try it on him next time I go in. Alright, let's try it. Using Inspector Burns costume. Well, that's not gonna work. All hell has broken loose since the government stopped requiring products to display those give a hoot, don't pollute symbols. Okay, don't know why that matters here. Now I've got an Inspector Burns disguise that would fool his own mother. It certainly ought to do the trick on a goofball like Ardo. Well, except for one problem. It's my hero, Inspector Burns! Uh, authoritative approach, heartwarming approach, scum bucket. Hello, fire safety ranger Ardo. I've come to inspect your fine hotel for fire safety. Oh boy, this is a dream come true. Ready for inspection, sir. See, I thought that I'd have to use the helium fill balloon as well, but apparently the fact that I have it in inventory means I'm automatically inhaling it in order to do the Inspector Burns voice. Because you can try doing this with the costume, but without the voice, and even Ardo is not stupid enough to fall for it. So, let's go ahead and get right down to business. Well, that's fine, Ardo. Open up those doors for me and I'll inspect your hotel rooms. All right! I'll open the doors, Inspector Burns. After a few minutes, I find the door to the Regency Escort Service Hotel Suite. The door's locked, but there's a security panel on the wall beside it. Looks like it requires a password. Oh, gee. Silicon. So this is the Regency Escort Service Love Suite. Now that I'm in, I'll need to find something to prove that Sal's been a frequent customer. Pretty swank for a whorehouse. I'm starting to think this painting's following me around. Yeah, we have seen that one, haven't we? Of course, there probably isn't anything behind all these paintings, but... Ah ha ha ha! A twisty board game. I used to play this as a kid. I wonder what the escort girls do with it. I think the better question is, what don't they do with it? Looks like a piece of bright, shiny foil. Must be from a bottle of champagne. Love the music here. This appears to be a very poor copy of Monet's Drowning Frogs. I'd call this one, Two Girls Bothered by Ants on a Picnic. This must be titled, Mishap on the High Seas. I do love the name, what the, the commentary. Nice, boring, but nice. The commentary and the names that text gives all these. Plastic plants, as always, add that special touch to a room. Wow, I'm looking at the painting behind it. This painting is very yellow. A rose bush by a fence. Pretty exciting stuff. I've seen worse. A list of names, all female. Looks like Sal's a regular here at the Love Suite. Man now wishing he hadn't gotten drunk and challenged the other guy to a duel for insulting Rosie, the toothless wench with the heart of gold. 
That needs to be a real painting name. Girls looking for contact lens. A book about the history of the Golden Gate Hotel. Looks fascinating. Let's see, can I move that book? Oh, I can't. Aha! A flat column! And yeah, checking on the floor for anything else that might be innocuous or overlooked. But I'm not seeing anything, so we'll go ahead and check this first room. Hmm, a piece of sheet music. Let's see, Lucido L'Amour. Must be Western music. That's Louis L'Amour. You'd think Tex would know that. A Larson Grand Piano. Wow. That's even better than a Stoffway. Good evening, ladies and charms. I'm your entertainer tonight, Mr. Franco Spinoza. I'm going to be playing some songs that I know you'll love. Listen to this one. see what else we've got in here. Large Tudor style windows. Got a nice view of the city. Oh, hello. Oh, a Passion's Breath room deodorizer. Mm, it smells terrible, but it's got a magnet on it. And magnets can be handy. Well, we got something. Not sure what we're going to do with it, but we've definitely got something. Yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and check across the hall here. Ah, French doors with American knobs. Lavish, yet practical. And if you're expecting me to make a knobs joke, too easy. Well. That hot tub actually looks like it might be fun. But maybe too much fun. Looks like someone left their shorts in the hot tub. I think I'll leave them right where they are. Yeah, heaven knows what else is in there. Well, I guess one of the escort girls left her bikini top. Oh, sick! A yucky band-aid! Ugh. Beer cans. Oh, they're empty. Aw. Plastic plants as always. Oh, yuck. The towel smells like mildew and fine hops. Looks like a couple of objects have fallen into the drain. With that screwdriver, I could undo the screws on this drain cover and get that roll of film. Hmm, a roll of film. But irony of irony, the screwdriver I need is underneath the part I need to unscrew. Oh, there's nothing like a fluffy, downy-scented towel. And that is nothing like a fluffy... You try scrubbing it out, you try soaking it out, but Sal still got that ring around the collar. Okay, so clearly I need something to get down there. But I don't have anything immediately obvious at the moment. This face looks like it was mounted here to hold flowers or something. Someone's dropped a cork into this mounted vase. The opening's too narrow to get my hand in. I'd break it, but it looks like it's made out of ceranite, that new unbreakable plastic. 
The cork looks like a typical champagne cork with some wire mesh on it. Hmm, wire mesh. Well, let's finish checking the rest of this place. Looks like we've got the suite itself. Uh, frilly panties. I hope they aren't Sal's. And usually flat lamp again. This is a piece by that famous dead artist Van Popper entitled uh, Corpse in a Field. Which one's cheating? Look closely. <laughs> this is a piece. Okay, nothing there. You know, suddenly, I'm hungry for a fruit. My Uncle Stan used to wear a tie with that same pattern on it. I bet this desk would look even better in my office. Looks like the upper left drawer is locked. I'll bet I could open it if I had something to pick the lock. Like some wire, maybe? I bet this desk would look... Aha! 12, 12 cents. Some people would take this change, but not me. Cash, maybe, but not change. Ah. But what if we need to scratch a scratch off later? I love. Hmm, the camera. Too bad there's no film in it. There's no dust on it, though. Must have been used recently. A Gideon's Bible. It figures. Everything points to Sal being an aspiring televangelist. Ha! Champagne glasses end up in the weirdest places. Hopefully this isn't Sal's negligee. The color's all wrong for him. <laughs> the bed looks deluxe. Firm, but not too firm. Alright, well, I think I know where to go from here. Because there's no way we can possibly break that vase. However... Even chlorinated water looks better in a champagne glass. Remember the story of the raven and the... Well, the story doesn't matter. Basically, we're going to use this to fill up that and our cork. Thankfully, it's not going to make us repeat doing it over and over. We just get the video suggesting it. As I fill up the mounted vase, the champagne cork flows to the top. I'm just gonna reach in and pick it up. Alright, so now we can look at this. If I can just get this piece of wire on. There we go. Mm, it smells terrible, but it's got a magnet on it. Magnets can be handy. So now I've got a bit of wire suitable for lock picking. And that gives us. Mm, it's a shoelace. I hope it hasn't been used inappropriately. And I think the shoelace and the magnet give us a magnet on a string. And what can we possibly do with a magnet on a string? Well, I'm glad you asked.
because we can now use that to get the screwdriver and use the screwdriver to open the grate and now we can get that film and with that done well where on earth are we going to get our pictures developed you know, I'd be willing to bet that the electronic shop might have something helpful. Oh, it's the Photomatic Plus Film Developing Kit. How convenient. Ain't it just? All right, credit card. Alright, we'll go ahead and combine that with the film. These pictures are sick. Francesca will be so happy. Alright. Well, gorgeous, you're back! <laughs> Did you get the evidence I need? I think I might. Let me look inside my overcoat. Ah! Oh, excellent! This will do the job nicely. <laughs> I'll answer all your questions now. You bring a greater joy to this old Italian stereotype. All right, let's go ahead and ask about the mugging. I was up late having some espresso, then I saw you get jumped. The guy who hit you was real small, maybe a 5'6", 130 pounds. I didn't see his face. He took your package you were carrying, then ran off. It looked like a professional hit, but he wasn't trying to kill you. Believe me, if he wanted to, he could have. After the first guy took off, I saw another guy come running down from your office. He bent over you and went through your car. Then he ran off too. I recognized the second guy. He was a mutant named Pug. In the fact, I remember seeing him hanging around your office for the past few days. Anyway, I went over to make sure you were okay. Sal showed up a few minutes later and I made him carry you up to your office. That's all I know. All right. Pug is ugly as sin and smells like he sleeps in a latrine. On and off for the past week or so, I've seen him keeping an eye on your office. And you didn't think to mention this to me before now. Why? <sighs> okay. Well, who might know something about disreputable people in the neighborhood? Talk to me, handsome. She called me handsome. Wish I could help you there, Tex. All right. What other disreputable people do I know who might know where a guy named Pug is? Hey, Amazy. Well, he's being awfully helpful, real quick. Well, Pug and I used to hang out sometimes, but I haven't seen him for a while. I heard he's gotten a job of some kind. He doesn't work very often, and he usually sleeps in a box down by the Snow White warehouse. And again, how am I just now hearing about this? Following Beak's instructions, I hang around the warehouse. Not long after, a gust of wind carries a horrible stench into my nasal passages. I turn and see a shadowy figure waddle into the alley. The way you look at me, it makes me nervous. <laughs> I cannot tell you about the jade bird, Mr. Spade. It will cause terrible things to happen. Yep, here, here's our uh, Peter Lorre character. Let's go with ominously pleasant. Oh, don't get me wrong, Pug. I'm here for a friendly chat. You mean, you're not here to hurt me. <laughs> no, I'm here to kill you. Now, why would I want to pound on you, little buddy? Oh, no reason. I guess I thought you were someone else. I must be going now. 
Listen, I brought my gun. I don't fire as many warning shots as I used to. This talk of guns has frightened me. I think I have soiled myself. How can you tell? You know, I don't care what you think. Because right this second, you've got one foot in the grave, and the other's on a big fat banana peel. Yes, and what the right do I have to think? You despise me, don't you? Please don't kill me. I'm trying to decide if that's the worst Peter Lorre impression I've ever heard, or if they actually are going for, your, for a Peter Lorre impression. Give me my wallet, and I promise I won't hurt you. At least not very much. Why are you treating me like I'm some kind of criminal? State the obvious. I don't know. Because you are one? You're a cynical person, if you'll forgive my saying so. Bogart retort. Oh, why not? If he's going to be Laurie, I'm going to be Bogart. Okay, I forgive you. And would you please just hand over my wallet? Here's your wallet. You will see I have spent very little of your money. Tell me, how did you find me? Well, you're pretty sneaky, but someone saw you rob me. They also said you were tailing me. I was hired to follow you. I provide people with information through ways of my own. <laughs> people actually hire you? <laughs> Who's the sap that had you following me? I was hired by an old P.I. who called himself the Colonel. He paid me to follow you and report back on everyone I saw you talk to. He also wanted me to tell him if I saw you with a little statue of a bird. He told me very little else, though he said that he had to find out if you could be trusted. There, I have told you everything I know. Now let me go, and I shall not bother you again. All right, well, looks like our old mentor has some questions to answer. And we will start with questioning him next time. We'll see you then.